it is a wonderful place, and also, if I'm being totally honest, it is quite terrifying. There are so many things out on the internet that are just trying to hurt you, but also so many that are trying to hurt you. So, I initially bit off a bit more than I could chew with this speech, because I was going to be talking about cybersecurity. I, at the time, I had no idea how broad that category was. So I decided to narrow it down a little bit and take a look at different aspects of cybersecurity. And I found the one that I think is everybody has been affected by at some point, but you probably don't even know the name of it. It's called digital tracking. So what this is, is if you've ever experienced you are, let's say you're looking to buy something on Amazon. Whatever it is, you're looking it up, but you don't decide to buy it. And then for the next week or so, you start noticing pop-up ads for that same kind of thing all over the place. This is because of digital tracking. So what this is uh, based on is, uh, I'm sure you've all heard of cookies on the internet. So those are uh, pieces of information from the website that are downloaded onto your computer to help store information. So these were invented in, uh, let's see, oh, sorry. According to Tara, Adis, I'm really bad with this last name, Adis Shan and Jen Kagan in their article, A Brief Introduction to Cookies on RecompilerMag.com from April 9th, 2018. 19, in 1994, Lou Mantoli, an engineer at Net, Netscape, was building an e-commerce platform for, telecommunication, for a telecommunications client. This challenge was to create a shopping cart that would associate the items in the cart with the user who put them there, without having to save information about partial transactions on the service client, or on the client server. Right? Lou's solution was the cookie, a way for a way, sorry, I'm here which provided a way for the server to get updates about the shopping cart state from the user. Cookies were quietly introduced in Netscape browser in 1995. Most Netscape users didn't know about it until cookies didn't know about cookies until the Financial Times published an article about them in 1996. So, from the point of view of the business, it's a great technology. You don't have to run it off your own server. It saves a lot of time and energy. The problem with this is, and on uh, Vintage Media's in the media group's March 17, 2020 article, Understanding Consumer Behavior with a Digital Tracking System claims, knowing consumer behavior is critical to a business marketing strategy. With this insight, it allows you to allocate your resources, plan accordingly, and target more customers. The impetus is to serve the right advertisement at the right moment to your target audience. There are three primary influencing factors, psychological, personal, and social. Understanding the way consumers think allow marketers to optimize ad spend and make better choices. So it only took about a year for the internet to figure out that there's probably some dangers in this. It, after all, is downloading something that it, you probably don't want. But then what they found out was that it was not only being downloaded, it was also sending information back every time you used that site. It didn't take long after this, within the next 10 years, companies started having bits of data that coincided with two different websites that met in the middle Thus, you have digital tracking. So the internet is able, through cookies, to uh, create a complex personal database of just one person. So like mine in particular, there's probably a lot of video editing nonsense, video game news, movies, information. Everyone has a different profile that is created because of digital tracking. And it markets to you accordingly. So the problem for this is people are taking this information and selling it selling it to other companies. Now, I have to admit, when I, like I said, when I started, I didn't know much about this, and most of my information was based on a game. So I did have to do a little bit more research. But I, and I, what I found is most of the extreme cases are only hypothetical. So far, nothing has been proven. I just want to come out with a disclaimer there. <laughs> so what they did find out was that digital tracking can be used in this way, but has not yet. So imagine that you're trying to go to the bank for a loan, but then they look at your Amazon buying history and see you probably don't make the best choices with your money and decided to deny that loan. Or you're trying to get car insurance and they say, oh, well, you've bought six different cars in the last 10 years. We won't give you insurance because you're just going to you're just going to crash your car again or your deductibles are going to be really high. So how can this innovative piece of technology be used for profit? Well, like I just described, Simon Hills tells in his March 29th, 2015 article, The History of Cookies and Their Effect on Privacy. Unfortunately, the original intent of the cookie has been subverted for some unscrupulous entities who have found a way to use this process to actually track your movements across the web. They do this by 
serendipitously planting their cookies and retrieving them in such a way that allows them to build a detailed profile of your interests, spending habits, and lifestyle. Hill later also states that the real issue isn't the technology itself, but what people chose to do with it, and that's a lot harder to police. So if somebody decides to take your information and sell it to the highest bidder, there's nothing that can be done by you. In Caroline Kickred's November 15, 2017 article, We're Not Alone, No One Reads the Terms of the Service Agreement, on businessinsidertrack.com, she informs us that a study, a Deloitte survey of 2,000 consumers in the U.S. found that 91% of people consent to legal terms and service agreements without reading them. For younger people that were through ages 18 to 34, the rate is even higher with 97% agreeing on the conditions before even reading them. So every time you get that pop-up that says, hey, before you go to this website, we want you to know about this stuff. So many people don't read this. They actually, I didn't put it in here, but they did a study where they wrote just a completely ridiculous article that literally had them agree to giving away their first, firstborn child. <laughs> and still 90% or more decided to agree to it because they didn't even read it. Companies should be, sorry, giving a little time myself. Uh, Kate Pratt also says that of course consumers don't have much of a choice. If they don't agree, they can't access the wireless, wireless network, new app, or whatever they, it is they want to use. There's nothing they can do about it. So even if you decide not to agree, you still can't use that website. And in the case of a school, a lot of times you need to go to a website and able to you know, do assignments like this, where you need to do research. And then literally the same site I read that on said, hey, these are our cookie agreements. So you, and it only said, I agree. There was no, I don't agree. <sighs> <laughs> Anyways, so what can you do to protect your information? Companies should be required by law to be transparent with what they do with their data, and for the most part, they are. The problem with this is shared by Timothy Murray's article from May 2015 in, in an issue of Harvard Business Review that, co co sorry, the name of it is Consumer, Customer Data Designing for Transparency and Trust. It states that through some companies, though some companies are open about their data practices, most prefer to keep customers in the dark choose control over sharing, and ask for forgiveness rather than permission. It's also not unusual for companies to quietly collect personal data they have no immediate use for, reasoning that it might be valuable someday. So right now they could be collecting, I don't even know, they're collecting how many times you visit a site a day. They have no current need for it, but in two years, who knows, that might be important. Technologies such as Amazon's Alexa, Google Home, or Siri are always listening for keywords. They're not actually listening to your voice, but they're looking to pick up just a single word and then they send that through in part of your cookies. And this is why you might get ads for something you've only talked about. Murray later, Murray later states, it's not consumer, I'm really sorry, it's not as if consumers don't realize the data about them being captured. However, 97% of people surveyed expressed concern that businesses and the government might misuse their data. Identity theft was a top concern. Privacy issues also ranked high, 80% of business, 80% of Germans and 72% of Americans are reluctant to share information with businesses because they just want to, to, they just want to maintain their privacy. So consumers clearly worry about their personal data, even if they don't know exactly what they're revealing. So this is why we really need to start restricting. So what you can do is just don't put as much personal data, clear your cookies every now and again. There are a million ways to do that. There are a million people telling you how to do that online. There's so many solutions. Just don't give away your personal data. Next time you're using a website, pay attention to what information you're giving regarding your identity because you could be putting yourself up to auction. The future lies in all of our hands, so do it well.